For example, ABC company is calculating the depreciation on a machine with a depreciable basis of $100,000, a 6 years useful life and a 5 years property class life. So here the value of the asset is $100,000, the useful life is 6 years and the asset falls in 5 year property class and it calculates the annual depreciation charges using MACUS. So how we calculate annual depreciations in 6 years using 5 years property class according to MACUS or according to modifi modified accelerated cost recovery system. Here if you see that the initial value is $100,000 and because the asset falls in 5 years property class so in every year we'll charge one fifth depreciation and because in the first half life of, uh, of of the asset we are bound to use double declining method so always we we shall multiply the depreciation with 2 the rate of depreciation with 2 so in this way we can we can calculate the first 3 years of depreciation but another thing is the half year convention if you see that in the first year we are um, uh, we are taking 50% of the depreciation by multiplying uh, the value with 0.5 in the first year and in the last year here. So this is because we are using half year convention as well. So half year convention is fulfilled and there is a shift of depreciation method from double declining to straight line. So in first three years we are using double declining method and in the last three years we are using straight line method of depreciation. So using this uh, this method, we uh, we calculate the first year depreciation equals to twenty thousand, which is the twenty percent. Second year we are making a depreciation of thirty two thousand, which is thirty two percent, and then nineteen point. So if you see that these values represent the 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 rates which we have already uh, seen in this table: twenty percent, thirty two percent, nineteen point two percent, eleven point five two percent and when we use all the conventions of modified accelerated cost recovery system we come up to up, uh, we, we come up with the same percentages that we have studied in uh, we, that we have studied previously in the ta previously in, in in the table so this is the process of modified accelerated cost recovery system okay second thing is the interest deductibility okay one more thing that why we use MACUS, we, we use it for tax purposes. Here if you see that this is um, 20,000 20, cost we are charging to, to our income statement and then 32,000 uh, there is a slight increase in first to in second year and then there is a slight modified decrease and there is a straight line and then a decrease in profit uh, and decrease in depreciation cost. So decrease in depreciation cost means there is an increase in profit and the company would pay high tax so this if if we use a double declining method the the depreciation will fall down quickly and in the later years company would have to pay a higher uh, higher tax on its profit but if we use this modified accelerated cost recovery system uh, the cost of depreciation is normally uh, it, it it declines very very slowly or with with a, uh, the decline is very modified so this is uh, this is the purpose of using MACUS for for tax purposes second issue is the interest deductibility the interest is an expense uh, paid on outstanding debt and this is tax deductible there is another similar expense which is known as cash dividend which is the distribution of earning to the shareholders but this cash dividend is not tax deductible because if you will pay tax this will reduce your earning and this will definitely um, uh, reduce the tax burden so if you want to calculate that how much is the cost of interest the formula is that after tax cost of debt is interest expense multiplied by 1 minus tax rate so if you are paying 1000 of interest expense and the tax rate is 50% the cost of this 1000 interest expense would be equal to 500 only so this is uh, the way uh, uh, that company can use the interest expense to reduce its tax burden so the the, the cost of debt or the the interest cost is always less than the face value of the interest expense 
so therefore we can we can conclude that the debt financing has a tax advantage okay now let's talk about financial environment now the business interact businesses interact continually with the financial markets financial markets are composed of all institutions and procedures for bringing buyers and sellers of financial instruments together and the purpose of financial market is to efficiently allocate savings to ultimate users if you see this uh, this this presentation i have taken this presentation from the book of fundamentals of financial management 12th edition by van horn so in this in this presentation you can see that there is a flow of funds from saving sector to investment sector and uh, investment sector can include businesses government and households and saving sector also includes households businesses and government so saving sectors have have surplus funds and they they the, there is a flow of funds from saving sector to investment sector means they are buying um, they can buy they can invest uh, the saving sector can invest money in investment sectors but there is a flow of funds from financial brokers to investment sectors as well this means that financial brokers actually uh, represent investment bankers and mortgage bankers means in case of uh, IPOs or initial public offerings these investment bankers they buy shares from investment sectors and they provide funds to investment sector and then this the, these investment bankers who have uh, uh, who, uh, who have designed to facilitate in initial public offerings they sell these shares to general public and therefore there is a flow of funds again from saving sector to financial brokers and these shares are also bought from financial brokers by financial intermediaries financial intermediaries include commercial banks saving institutions insurance companies pension funds financial companies and mutual funds so these financial intermediaries they also buy these shares from financial brokers and therefore there is a flow of funds from financial intermediaries to financial brokers so uh, once again from the saving sectors funds flow in one direction to investment sector in other directions from the saving sectors the the funds flow to financial brokers financial brokers also receive funds from financial intermediaries because financial intermediaries invest or buy um, buy shares or securities from financial brokers there is another f another relationship between saving sector and secondary market secondary market include stock exchanges and over the counter markets because uh, the second hand shares uh, are available here in secondary market so there is uh, a f the flow of funds from saving sector to secondary market means the the people in saving sectors maybe household they invest in secondary market as well they buy shares and they sell share therefore there is an inflow and outflow of funds from saving sectors to secondary market and there is also uh, a flow of funds from secondary market to financial intermediaries they also the financial intermediaries not only buy sh shares or securities from financial brokers but they also buy funds uh, sorry securities from secondary market so if you see that all these areas all these institutions are interconnected so there is a flow of funds from saving sector uh, in three major directions toward investment sector towards financial brokers and towards secondary market and in return they receive securities in return they receive securities from investment sector they receive securities from secondary market and from financial brokers but there is a one sided flow of saving sector flow of fund from saving sector to financial intermediaries because certain time saving sector uh, keep their money in 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 banks in in bank accounts so there is no flow of securities um, on on the other side so this is uh, the flow of fund situation in an economy so in short funds will flow to economic unit that are willing to provide the greatest expected return holding the risk constant in a rational world the highest expected returns will be offered only by those economic units with the most promising investment opportunities the result is savings 10 
to be allocated to the most efficient users. This means that the the, uh, the flow of fund is towards those economic units which which promises high return with the constant risk. So risk plays an important role in 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 flow of funds. So there are different types of security risk. Uh, for example, there is a default risk. Default risk is a failure to meet the term of a contract. Means if if you say that this security, uh, there is a chance that a certain certain security will fail to meet its terms of contract, then this means that this security involves default risk. The risk of marketability is that uh, the marketability is the ability to sell a significant volume of securities in a short period of time. The security which is more marketable definitely involves less marketability risk. Another type of risk is maturity risk that is concerned with the life of the security, the amount of time before the principal amount of a security becomes due. Uh, the security is of a longer maturity means the security which will get matured in 10 years or 20 years involve maturity risk and the security is of a shorter duration involve less maturity risk. There is another risk that is the risk of taxability. It considers the expected tax consequences of the security is that when you will get return on a security, how much tax you need to pay on that on that return. And finally, there is a risk of inflation, which involves in every type of security. Inflation is a rise in average level of prices of goods and services. The greater inflation expectations, then the greater are expected returns. Uh, this statement actually shows that whatever the type of risk is whether there is a risk of inflation whether there is a risk of taxability maturity marketability or default risk uh, if there is a higher risk involved in the security returns then this 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 particular security must ensure a higher return if the higher risk is not is is not associated with higher higher risk is not associated with higher return then investor will not get attracted towards that security so that's why we say in finance that higher the risk higher the return that it means that the security uh, which has a higher risk must ensures a higher return to attract the investor so this is a relationship of risk and return um, we have taken all these slides from uh, the book of financial fundamentals of financial management by Van Horn. This is the end of quick review of lecture 2. Thank you for your time.